Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next webinar in our Facebook Class Time um, Educator Community. Um, today, we'll be answering questions again from our community about Class Time and how to make the best of it. Uh, before I jump straight into it, I want to quickly um, share some updates um, that might be relevant for you. So um, we still have currently the limited offer for distance learning um, on our website. Just click on the banner above and apply for your school and we will get in touch with you to see what we can do for a limited free um, trial of all the school features, which include shared folders, classes, and other elements as such. Furthermore, um, I want to point out that until May 31st, we do have another uh, premium um, prom promotion where you can save up to an additional 30% if you commit to the yearly plan. So please do take a look at it if this is relevant to you. Great. So let's jump straight into the questions. We got a lot of questions this week, so uh, thank you for submitting them and sharing them with us. So the first question was from um, Veronica from California, and she asked, when will we have new challenges? So that's a great question. We love the challenges, and due to their high popularity, we will definitely have more and different challenges coming up in the future. Um, we're currently investing a lot of time talking to teachers, trying to understand how our different challenges work. We have the team challenges that we launched last year. We still have the traditional challenges where everyone has to work as one big class. We have the puzzle challenges. So we're continuously trying to understand how to make this better. And we will have better and new challenges coming up um, as we learn. So uh, stay tuned on that. Next question was from Scott from California. If the teacher wants to do a second question set, can they just click on the blue class time lo logo to refresh the page? And what happens when students click on the class time logo? Um, so this is something we changed over time, but the answer today is it does nothing. So if you click on this, it doesn't do anything and students have the same um, logo in the top, it doesn't do anything. It used to um, refresh the page. Um, now, if you'd like to refresh the page, just simply click on library and you will just refresh the page in the library, right? Um, so that's, um, yeah, simplified. Main reason is that uh, people that use their mobile phones, they would always have the logo and accidentally click on it. That's now a thing of the past. Next question was from Maria from Missouri. Um, asking us if we would consider a type of question where students can record their answers as an audio file because she's a foreign language teacher and she would love to do this um, for oral assessments. Um, so that's a very good feature request and that is something that is not possible today. Um, we see the value in it absolutely and um, this is something we will discuss with the team. Um, we know that many language teachers in both directions would like to share audio files. So this is something we will look at um, more closely. Um, the only workaround we have now, but I have to admit that's not optimal, is that you can use the live chat to exchange uh, files and any type of file. So you could technically record something and send it back. Um, but um, yeah, in short, we don't have that today, but uh, we see the value and we will make sure um, that we discuss this thoroughly with the product team. Thank you for your question. Um, next question is from Christina from Bogota. Um, how do you add audio files? So um, this is different to where students record their answers. This is where teachers would add an audio file um, into a question, right? And so if we go, for example, now into this um, question set, you can add images, you can add YouTube videos, but we currently do not support audio files. Um, so this is something we hear a lot, again, also from language teachers and something we are looking at with the product team. The current workaround is um, taking a file from YouTube that has audio so you can upload various audio files to YouTube and then just insert it as a video um, so that students would then stream through YouTube the audio. So a lot of teachers do that where you just then add the link. And the second option is that you upload it, um, the file, to some um, shared folder like on Google Drive or Microsoft Teams or whatever you use, and then add a link to that listening file uh, in the additional descriptions, which I will show with the next question, which is from uh, Hudson from Perth, Western Australia. 
how do you add a periodic table? So he has a challenge that um, as a chemistry teacher, there are um, various questions that you know students would um, be allowed to leverage uh, an additional resource such as a periodic table. And um, I wanna show how this is possible right now. So we don't have a overarching um, upload functionality where students can then at any time um, open that resource, but you can add it to the question description. And the way you could do that is two ways. So if you wanted the periodic table, one way is to add the image, right? So um, you would click and then upload it. So that will look something like this, if I remember correctly. Oh, sorry. I guess it's this one, yeah. So here uh, the image is uploaded. So when students then answer their question, they can always look into this, zoom and look at it and answer. But you might wanna use that uh, for something else, right? Maybe a different image that you wanna show. For example, in this case where we already have an image. Um, so how would you solve that then? So currently um, the best workaround for that would be to upload um, your file, your PDF, for example, of a periodic table. And this can also be an audio file or anything else, right? Or any other PDF um, into a, a shared folder. In this case, this is now um, our business folder. And I uploaded the periodic table of elements. And so what you would do is you would then share in this case of Google Drive, you need to get the shareable link and then you need to turn on link sharing so that it's public because right now it's a, it's a private link. And because we're an organization and that might be the case for your school too, um, you wanna make sure that the share settings are also open to everyone. So it shouldn't be uh, you know uh, at anyone at class time in my case, but it should be uh, anyone on the internet, right? Oh, sorry, this wrong, it's here. Uh, anyone with the link. So now anyone on the internet with this link can view. So this means your students don't have to be part of the organization and logged in. So then you're uh, extra safe. And so that is the link I'm going to copy now. And so um, when students then um, should have access to this resource, you can add it in the additional field. So you could do, for example, um, resource, right? Periodic table. And then you highlight it and click on the link icon and insert the link. And now it's stored. So when I save this now and I go into, I'm going to take a shortcut now and go straight into preview mode. But it's the exact same what a student would see. Um, students will now see a link here. And when they click on it, it will open a second tab, but it will then load their um, periodic table of elements. And you can use this for any type of file, right? So if you had any type of different PDFs, maybe a whole book with you know, 20 pages of PDFs, or if you have an audio file that you wanna upload, um, or a certain video that you don't have or don't want on YouTube, um, anything you can think of, you can just upload, share it um, with Microsoft Teams, Google Drive, whatever you use with a public link, and then include that link in the question description and students will be able to open this and um, use this as an additional resource. Um, let me see, I think that was it for today. So if, um, yep, that was it for today. So um, thank you for all the questions um, submitted throughout the week. Um, I will always try my best to answer the questions also next week. So if you have any comments, please add them in the comment section or email us at um, support at costtime.com or use our live chat and we'll gladly um, take up your question in next week's webinar. Thanks for attention and uh, talk to you soon.